Hallo Leute, ich bin Katja und ihr seht Deutsch für euch. So, like I promised, today I will be explaining the time words sofort, gleich, bald, danach, demnächst, and something I just forgot. Right, nachher. And their usage in utterances about the future. Nailed it. These are sorted from the closest in time to the farthest away. So let's take a look. Sofort. Literally means right now and therefore normally probably isn't expected to deal with the future, but it can. We use it to say that we're right before starting to do something. We're right there. It's right there in the immediate future. That sort of thing. It's also, of course, used for angry orders. Räum das sofort auf! Which will probably result in a spiteful teenager replying Gleich! Best English equivalent is probably in a minute. Ich komme gleich! Basically, I'm about to do it, just give me one more second. Or two. Or a few thousand. It's the procrastinator's second favorite word right after später. Literally, later. So it's used the exact same way, except it can't be used as an abbreviation of see you later. You can't just say goodbye to somebody in German by just saying später. You have to at least put a bis before it. Bis später. But besides that, they're pretty much the same. When referring to the future, we could get a sentence like this. Wir gehen später essen. Danach and hiernach. Danach is the more common one of the two, but they mean almost the same thing. This is basically a more specific way to say later. You use it when you're currently doing something and plan on doing something right after finishing that activity you're at right now. So basically, right after this. To differentiate between the two, we could say that danach means after that, or just after, while hiernach means something like hereafter. So hiernach points to what you're doing at the moment even more. You know, like, I'm fixing something, so Hiernach, I'm going to, I don't know, cook dinner or something. While danach can also refer to something that is not yet in progress, but still is seen as something that will happen in the future, and then we want to ask about what happens after that. So that is what we would use danach for. And that is why hiernach is rarer, because you can only really use it when you're actually in the progress of doing something, and even then you can still use danach instead. Und was macht ihr danach? In this example, we can just assume that the speaker's conversational partner has just told the speaker about what they want to do later, and the speaker is now asking about what they will do after that. For this, we could be talking about the immediate, close or distant future, that doesn't matter. Because we're only talking about the future in relation to an action that is going to happen at some point other than now, or even now. Because we're kind of looking at the future from the perspective of a certain action, so that could be in the next year or it could be within the next five minutes because we're looking at the Danach puts whatever happens after that in relation to the thing that happens first. So I could say, I'm currently going to college, but Danach I will find a job. But I could also say, I want to get married and Danach have children. Hiernach really only points to something that you are actually doing at the moment. And since here already is a didactic expression, so it already points to something, we do not need to point out what specifically we're doing at the moment, because it should be obvious if we're using hiernach. So it wouldn't work to say, I'm currently going to college and hiernach I will find a job, because firstly you already pointed out what that here thing is, and secondly it's not an action that ends within the foreseeable future. You know, it's not an action that you're bringing to an end and then doing something else, but it is basically your life plan. But if you were, let's say, working on an essay and your roommate came in to ask about dinner, you could point to your computer screen and say, hiernach, we can eat. But again, keep in mind that hiernach is just used a lot less, especially in spoken language, so it would also be perfectly fine to say, I'm working on my essay right now, but danach, we can eat. Nachher. Basically another form of later. Compared to danach, it is less specific and not bound to a certain activity, but originally it meant something like after something that I need to get done first. But in most cases, später and nachher are exchangeable. The only difference might be that später is very stretchable, while nachher 
implies a foreseeable time frame. But again, this is information that you might find interesting, but you don't need to keep that in mind. Just use whichever comes to your mind first. Wir gehen nachher essen. Bald. Soon. That's it. Just like gleich, später and nachher, it can be combined with a bis to make it an expression that you can use to say goodbye. So, bis bald. See you soon. Demnächst. Also soon, but with some kind of hope in there that it's going to be sooner than that stretchable soon in see you soon and then it ends up being another year before you see each other. For that we would use bald. That is at least what is implied through the nächst part of demnächst because nächste, nächste, nächstes means the closest, the nearest, the soonest. So when I say I'll do it demnächst, I expect to be able to do whatever I want to do in, within an expectable time frame. It doesn't matter how long that time frame is, but I'm kind of already picturing doing it. In contrast, I would use bald to push something away, just, you know, vaguely say that I'll do it, you know, just postpone it for now. But again, those are just nuances. If you care, try to use them that way. If you don't, it doesn't matter if you don't. So, you know, if they both mean soon, you can both use them like soon. And that is it for today. Your random word of the week is das Tablet. Don't confuse this with die Tablette, please. Bis nächste Woche. Tschüss! Thank you.